You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Poor Boy Sin. The Poe don't stand for Poe. Now, by the looks of the title, man, I'm about to help some of y'all out there increase the chances on getting your win percentage up out there in the parking in the neighborhood. Now, y'all know I haven't been really uploading gameplay like the same type of gameplay I was uploading on NBA 2K19. And I know a lot of y'all out there miss that, man, but... 2K20 is my victory lap year. It is the last year that I was grinding for top rep. I will not be grinding top rep on NBA 2K21. So I've, I've kind of lost passion for playing NBA 2K. Especially, you know, people that watch me on 2K19 know I introduced Lions Den and uh, Gorilla Cages. And uh, my gameplay was a little bit more intense, a little bit more interesting. In 2K20, I just don't get them type of vibes. So. A lot of y'all know I'm not grinding for top rep in 2K21, and more so I'm going to be more so focused on content, you know what I'm saying, and a, a, a lot of videos to help you guys out there, you know what I'm saying, the beginning of the year and throughout the year when it comes to NBA 2K21, and I'm kind of transitioning into that, so uh, this is one of them videos out there I know a lot of you guys have been waiting on. I still got the defensive tutorial, so don't grill me down low. I still got the defensive tutorial for you guys, but I did want to do this video because I do these videos every year. You know what I'm saying? You go back on my YouTube channel, 2K19, 2K18, 2K17. I always did a park tips video, and um, this video should help you become a better player out there in the neighborhood without learning any moves. So um, you don't have to have your controller out. You don't have to have your animations page out. Just pay close attention to what I'm saying. As well as, you know, pay attention to the gameplay in the background if you like. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my rebounding guard in the background. So anybody out there that likes my rebounding guard gameplay, you know what I'm saying? I got you in the background. Now, let's start off with the first tip. I want to let you guys know. You know what I'm saying? To become a better player out there in the neighborhood. Now let's start off with the first tip, which is knowing how your takeover works and how your opponent takeover works. Now I don't want to touch on this topic for too long because a lot of you guys should know out there when you're playing certain builds, certain builds can't do certain things unless they have their takeover, unless they do something out there on the court. So for instance, if you're playing a 6-3 offensive threat BP build, you should know that that build is gonna have a hard time speed boosting until they get some of their takeover. So you should take advantage of that in the beginning of the game to not let them get some of that takeover because once they get some of that takeover, they're gonna be a little bit more dominant out there. As well as you need to learn how your takeover works when it comes to being in the middle of a game, like if you're gonna get some ball handling increase or if you're gonna get a, a jump shot increase, the defensive increase. You need to know that out there in every game that you're playing. A lot of people don't pay attention to how their takeover works and how their opponent takeover works. And ultimately, they lose a lot of games for that very reason, especially when they're playing against a build that think that they can't do something, like can't shoot the ball or can't dribble the ball. And then once they give them a couple of free buckets, they're out there doing that very thing that they think that they couldn't do. So start learning how your opponent's takeover works and how your takeover works before the game gets too deep in and then you on the verge of losing that game now um next tip goes hand in hand to what i just said when it comes to knowing how your opponent's takeover works knowing your opponent's tendencies now there's a lot of players out there that have glitch tendency players and that's not what i'm talking about if you don't know what i'm talking about with the glitch tendency players you know, i advise you to go find out for yourself because there's players out there that's really not good and they just have max tendencies on their players now learning your opponent's tendencies is a very important thing to do out there you know what i'm saying in the park in the neighborhood because you could win a lot of games recognizing how your opponent plays before the game gets too deep in now um, a lot of people like to call me a rim runner and I don't consider myself a rim runner. I just consider myself a player that um, attacks every opportunity that I get when I'm playing the game. You know, a lot of people don't don't take the lane when they got the free lane. They'll rather shoot a jump shot to look cool instead of taking the easy bucket to the lane. So it's like if they're going to give me the easy bucket to the lane all game, I'm going to take that. You know what I'm saying that's in terms of breaking down my defender, you know, but a lot of you guys want to learn your opponent's tendencies when they're on offense and recognizing if they're scared to shoot the ball, if they don't have a lot of dribble skill, 
um, if they're one-sided, so if they're using screens and they like to go to one side of the screen every play, or they like to shoot off one side of the screen every play, they don't like going to their left side, they don't like dribbling to their left side, and you know what I'm saying? You have to pay attention to a lot of those things out there on the court and put it all into one thought process before your opponent gets to 10 points. Now, one of the things I say is if your opponent gets to 10 points and you don't recognize their tendencies, you're not recognizing how they play, you're going to lose that game. Even on the three score, this is this is mainly though, specifically talking about on the two score because you're not gonna get the ball back. So if you don't recognize your opponent's tendencies on the twos, you're gonna lose that game fast. On the threes court, uh, you have a lot of opportunities to stay in the game. You have a lot of opportunities to make a comeback because your opponent is always gonna have to play defense and you're always gonna have to play defense. So you're gonna get a chance on offense, your opponent is gonna get a chance on offense. So, But on mainly on the twos, man, you wanna recognize those tendencies ASAP before your opponent gets to 10 points because if they get to 10 points, you don't recognize how they play, you are definitely going to lose that game. Now let's go on to the next tip, you know what I'm saying? And I will have a discussion with you guys down low in the comment section, anybody that's asking questions on the tips that I'm saying, because I don't want to make this video too long. So um, if you do have any questions about any of the tips, let me know down below in the comments. Now, next tip that I wanted to talk about is less, less reaching and more recognizing. Yes, man. Stop reaching out there. A lot of y'all reach too much and you definitely not even going to get the steal most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time you're going to get a foul, which is going to reduce your takeover. Most of the time you're reaching at the, the wrong time in the shot clock. You're, you're reaching with five seconds left in the shot clock. Why are you doing that? That's low basketball IQ. You know what I'm saying? If you ever play basketball IRL, my coach used to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Stay down. Stay last five seconds. Stay down. You know what I'm saying? Don't reach. Don't get too jumpy. Don't get too shivy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shifty, all jittery, and uh, going against your opponent. Stay down. Less reaching more recognizing and then that goes hand in hand with the next tip which is no reaching after 10 seconds left on the shot clock when it's 10 seconds left on the shot clock stay down play for shot clock i try and tell the people that i play with you know what i'm saying when i'm grinding the legend last 10 seconds last five seconds stay down play for shot clock recognize you know what I'm saying? The time left on the shot clock, man. It will it really will help you a lot on defense because a lot of players, if they're still if they still have the ball with 10 seconds left on the shot clock, they're either going to panic, they have no stamina, they're about to rim run to the lane, or they're gonna put up a quick shot. So you have to start recognizing the shot clock when you're out there playing defense, especially on the twos. On the threes, it's easier to maintain the control when the shot clock is going down. On the twos, it's harder to maintain because uh, a player can quickly get an easy bucket with the shot clock going down. So, you know what I'm saying? Take that in as a mental note. No reaching after 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Try it out for yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. If a player is, you know what I'm saying, tired and has no stamina and the shot clock is going down, you feel like the steal is there, you feel like you're going to get that steal, go for it. But, you know what I'm saying, in my experience, every time I've reached with 10 seconds left, 5 seconds left, I get called for a foul and I get them 14 more seconds, you know what I'm saying, on the shot clock, give them a shot clock reset. And then now they get their stamina back when inbounding the ball. You know what I'm saying? You get the animation with inbounding the ball. Their stamina is just coming back. And then boom, they got full stamina with 14 seconds left on the clock. And then they get another chance at making, making that play happen. So no reaching after 10 seconds left on the clock. Now the next tip out there that I wanted to give you guys, a lot of people already know this. Some people don't know it. A lot of people overlook this badge and don't think this badge is a good badge because it doesn't work for them. Same as floor general. But defensive leader is a very underrated bat, especially on the twos court. Now, when you're on the twos court and you have one defensive leader, you're able to call out for your teammate if that player is able to shoot or not, as well as you're able to see if your matchup is able to shoot or not, which better makes for better defense, you feel me? So, I need some of y'all out there to test out that defensive leader badge, depending on how many badge upgrades you got. But if you're able to put defensive leader on over another badge you really don't need, 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you really don't need box on Hall of Fame. So, you know, you could probably put that box down a little bit. Take another badge down a little bit. Like, you don't need Interceptor on Hall of Fame. And put defense leader on Hall of Fame on. It's going to help your teammates stick defense better. As well as you're going to be able to call out and let your teammate know if his opponent, can, his matchup can shoot or not. And if your matchup can shoot or not. And then y'all could talk about switches and things like that. And it just helps in a major way. Because when it comes to these player labels out there and when you're playing against a glass planning or lockdown, you don't know if they're able to shoot or not. So if your teammate has on defensive leader, he could tell you right off the bat, off the first play, that glass cleaning lockdown touching the ball. Oh, he can't shoot. He's not a shooting glass lock. Because some of y'all out there losing games thinking that every glass cleaning lockdown can shoot. And then thinking that the glass cleaning lockdown can't shoot. And then you're losing the game based off of thinking if the glass cleaning lockdown can shoot or not. If you have one defense leader, you could tell off the first play, first possession, if that glass cleaning lockdown can shoot the ball or not. For example, just like a two-way slasher playmaker or if you play a slasher. You know what I'm saying? Because there are some player labels out there that get labeled slasher and they have a high three-pointed rating. So, you know what I'm saying? Take that into the note next time you hop on the court. You know what I'm saying? The next tip I want to talk about is boxing out before jumping. Boxing out before jumping is... It's probably the best thing you could do when it comes to rebounding out there. So, shouts out to my rebounding guards. Shouts out to my rebounding wings out there. They already know this. You know what I'm saying? They already know this from playing small ball. The more box outs you make, the more rebounds you are going to get. Before you go for that rebound, look for the closest man under the basket. Closest man to the basket and box him out. Majority of the time, you're going to get that rebound because you're going to be able to react first to going to wherever the rebound is going to go so take that into note man more boxing out less jumping now uh next tip i want to go into which goes hand in hand with the tip before uh last is recognizing player labels so just like i was talking about with the defensive leader you know what i'm saying and recognizing if a glass cleaning lockdown can shoot or not recognize player labels understand how certain builds are made understand that certain builds can do you know what I'm saying? More than one thing. Like I already gave the example with the glass cleaning lockdowns. Some can shoot, some can't shoot. Just like the two-way slashing playmakers or the two-way slashers or the uh, two-way finishers and so on and so on. The glass cleaner. It's a lot of people that play against that glass cleaner build and they think that it's just a glass cleaner. Like it's just a rebounder and it's actually a spot up. It's actually a shooting build. You know what I'm saying? Red and green pie. So... You know what I'm saying? Take that into the note next time you play against a couple of kids and you don't really understand their label or understand their build. You know what I'm saying? Extra teammate or try and think about it when when you're thinking about the my player builder. Think if that build really has a three-point rating or not. Think if that build really has a high defensive rating or not. Think if that build really has defensive badges or not. You know? And so on, so on. Now, um... I hope you guys appreciate these park tips. You know what I'm saying? Another thing I want to say is underestimate no one. You will lose to all stars. You will lose to a, a superstar. You will lose to a player you really think you shouldn't have lost to because you didn't take none of these tips into note. You know what I'm saying? You didn't think about none of these tips that I just said when you out there playing. A lot of you guys panic. And you lose the game because you panic. Out there on that tools court, a lot of people get scared to lose the ball. A lot of people get scared to give up the ball. You know what I'm saying? When I'm playing on a defender build, I, like when I'm playing on my rebounding guard on the twos, I love to play defense because, you know what I'm saying, centers think they could bully me, you know? When I'm when I'm playing on my three-point playmaker, I love playing offense, you know? I don't like giving up the ball when I'm, when I'm playing guard, you know? But when I'm playing spot up and when I'm playing defender, I love playing defense. Not saying that I like giving up the ball, but I like playing defense. So a lot of y'all like are scared to have the even scared to have the ball on the twos. And you shouldn't be on the twos court at all. So, you know, underestimate no one. Um, like I said, I hope you guys appreciate these park tips. Let me know down in the comment section if you got any questions. You know what I'm saying? You want to open a discussion about any of these tips. Um, y'all be easy. Stay blessed. Let me know down in the comment section what else you would like to see here on this channel. Because like I said, I'm in the process of transitioning my channel into being out of the comp scene. Like on 2K21, I don't care if y'all consider me the best park player or not anymore or anything like that. Like I don't I don't even care about that wave anymore. You know, I've been doing this for four 2Ks now going on five 2Ks. I've pretty much proven 
out there on that court and in that neighborhood every year that I know what I'm talking about. So hopefully in 2K21, y'all rocking with me when it comes to talking to you guys about builds, jump shots, animations, and all that good stuff when the game first releases, cause that's the direction I'm headed into, you know? You know, so y'all be easy, stay blessed. 300K on the way, I'ma catch up with y'all on the next one.